I'd like to play a game. I'd like to know who here you trust the least at the table. I kid you not, I know a girl who makes everyone go around the table at a birthday dinner and say one thing they hate about the birthday girl. And that's when I learned Arizona girls are built different. Boy, I'm built different. Yeah, I'm built different. Demi Lovato went on Call Her Daddy. I watched so you don't have to. And now have the three juiciest bombshells from that interview. These two actresses from our childhood were supposed to be Hannah Montana and Lily. Hunter Schaefer, the trans actor from Euphoria, has caused huge drama and infighting within the trans movement. Very, very, very juicy. And we'll end with the Pop Culture Rewind. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Poplitics. A big, honky, thick boy moment in the podcast world happened, and I took literal notes while I watched for y'all. Here's what I thought were the three juiciest moments from the Call Her Daddy Demi Lovato interview, plus my thoughts overall. The first thing that piqued my interest is when Demi says purity culture happened at her church around the ages of 11 or 12, and that she thought it was inappropriate conversation for kids that age. Curious if this is something you agree or disagree with? I'm not sure how purity culture is too mature but not any of this trans junk. She also reveals that she has a project in the works where she wants to talk to former childhood actors like Miley, Selena, and the Jonas Brothers about their experiences with Disney. Sounds like this will also include childhood actors who weren't necessarily Disney affiliated, but there are just so many names she could interview. Jeanette McCarty, hello. So hopefully this project is actually juicy and tells us something we don't already know or suspect. While you're waiting for your tea water to boil, reflect on all of your regrets. Then Demi said she lost her virginity due to being raped as a teen by someone else who was also on Disney. But before we all start thinking of familiar faces, it's apparently someone we don't know or wouldn't think of. <laughs> Okay, so those are three standout moments, but here's the thing. I was frustrated that Alex Cooper didn't push Demi on her flip floppy activism or her sexuality. Demi is like Hollywood's biggest gender shapeshifter. Asking the hard questions there would have been gold. If you eat gold, you also poop gold. Here's what I think. There could only be one of two reasons her weird pronoun stuff wasn't even addressed. Either Alex was too scared to go there, or Demi's team said it was off limits. I'm kind of leaning towards her team because of the weird victim Olympics she plays. Because here's the thing, Demi loves to be a member of every oppressed group known to man, even if it always brings the worst PR. And now people just find her annoying on the left and the right. No sane person can take her seriously because she changes her religion or gender or sexuality so frequently, and the fact that right before this new album of hers dropped, she said, oh, by the way, you guys can use she, her pronouns again. Like maybe her team was saying to her, you know what? You need to backpedal away from this stuff. It is so complicated. No one's gonna wanna do interviews or promote your album if they're worried about using your pronoun of the week. Is this some sort of trick question that ends with you yelling at me about the gender binary? And if that wasn't disappointing enough, Alex didn't even name Wilmer Valderrama or ask more pointed questions about that relationship, even though Demi's lead single, 29, from the album is all about grooming behavior. I would have pressed her on that, and the fact that she has always said in interviews since that, you know, well, he saved my life multiple times, you know, when it came to her substance abuse issues and stuff, like, why are we walking all of this back now? Is it because in hindsight you feel like you were groomed? It's sometimes hard for me to listen to other people conduct interviews now because I'm tearing it apart like, you should have done this, you should have done this. And so because of that, it wasn't as epic as I would have liked, but Demi did seem likable and normal, which is a testament to how hard her PR team must be working. Like they deserve raises off the wazoo. I don't know, it's just a lot. Before I get into the next story, tonight at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, a new episode of The Spillover comes out everywhere you get your podcast. This is going to completely divide the pro-life conservative right. It is a sensitive subject, but it's also one of the most requested discussions that we haven't done yet. If you listen to the Christian Walker episode, that is your hint. Now, speaking of Disney, you remember Allie and AJ, right? Allie and I start. So get this, 
They were offered the roles of Hannah Montana and her BFF Lily, but turned it down. And that is how it went to Miley Cyrus and Emily Osment. Disney even went back to Allie and AJ after they said, no, thank you. And were like, are you sure? Cause we're gonna go on to the next person and offer it to another couple people. I wonder if they're still happy with their decision or if they've been kicking themselves ever since. You are the worst best friend ever. Who's that? Special delivery from your worst best friend ever. Come on in, Derek. You set me up on a blind date. That is the most <gasps> wonderful thing you have ever done. <laughs> if you've watched Euphoria, you know that the trans character played by Hunter Schaefer is also trans in real life. Hunter plays Jules on the show, a boy who wants to be a girl. So this is juicy drama. There is infighting happening in the trans community between trans people who identify as one gender and non-binary people, also known as NB, FYI, who of course, identify as neither. Some trans people feel like the non-binary, I have no gender peeps have hijacked their movement for the worse. And non-binary people were offended that gender dysphoria was being categorized as a mental disorder. So they fought to say it wasn't. In doing so, some states have given them what they wanted, which means since gender dysphoria isn't considered a mental disorder, trans people can't get their surgeries for free. Well, the trans people who just identify as one gender are furious. And Hunter Schaefer liked a post explaining all of this, which then enraged the non-binary crowd. How dare you! <laughs> so the non-binary peeps, or the NBs, are trying to say, oh, well, you know what? Even though Hunter is trans, he's still white before anything else, so he's naturally just pure evil. The moral of the story is, you cannot win with these people. But maybe we don't have to do anything, and they'll just implode on their own. Oh, man, the building is on fire. The new Apple docuseries is coming out celebrating gutsy women. So, of course, they're including a drag queen, a trans person, and Hillary Clinton. So, a man, another man, and a demon on a documentary about gutsy women. When will this nightmare end? Hop into my little pink time machine. Hey, little miss, little miss, little miss time machine. Let's see what happened this week in pop culture history with the Pop Culture Rewind. In 1961, this week, Motown released what would be its first number one hit, Please Mr. Postman, by the Marvelettes, but it was reintroduced to a whole new generation of young people with Vine. You know, TikTok's grandmother. Wait, oh yes, wait a minute, Mr. Postman. Yeah. This week in 1992, Ruby Ridge was the site of a deadly confrontation and siege in northern Idaho between Randy Weaver, his family, and his friend Kevin Harris, and agents of the United States Marshal Service and FBI. It resulted in the death of Weaver's son, Sammy, his wife, Vicki, and Deputy U.S. Marshal William Francis Deegan. I did an entire pop talk on this story if you search Ruby Ridge Poplitics on YouTube. The 11 day siege at a place called Ruby Ridge, Idaho. It happened before Waco, and for many, it's an even bigger rallying cry. I want the truth! Then, this week in 2007, the skeletal remains of Russia's last royal family members were discovered in Russia, including the Grand Duchess Anastasia. Figures dancing gracefully across my memory. In 2013, this week at the MTV VMAs, the Miley Cyrus twerking performance with Robin Thicke happened, where Hannah Montana became officially dead and America was pop culturally traumatized. And that's what happened this week in pop culture history. I need to end on the sweetest, most precious video. You know, I'm obsessed with Bindi Irwin. Watch her daughter recognize Steve Irwin and her grandmother. They call Steve Irwin Grandpa Crocodile. Bunny, good girl. And koala? And 
I'm still so emo about his death and it's been like a hundred years. New spillover tonight, don't forget. Heart, thumbs up this episode. What is your opinion on what Demi said in the Call Her Daddy interview and why they didn't bring up her gender stuff? Do you think Miley Cyrus and Emily Osment were the best people for their roles or would you have liked Ali and AJ? I think Once Upon a December, by the way, in the movie Anastasia is one of the most beautiful Disney songs. Is there one particular Disney song that you think just stands out above the rest? Send this episode to a girl who loves to put everyone on edge at every single social gathering and please don't forget to tap the save button on Instagram. Poplitics is B-A-C-K tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Pause! I was just notified that Anastasia was not a Disney movie. It was some, some other thing. So anyway, the question still stands. Just I guess not what the best superior Disney song is, but just what is the most superior animated song from a children's movie. It's pop culture without the propaganda every single day. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Poplitics. Clearly, Poplitics is best served visually, but you can also listen to Poplitics if you just want the audio. Subscribe to us anywhere you get your podcasts. Apple, Spotify, iHeart, TuneIn, and more. Also, make sure that if you are listening to the podcast version, you leave us a five-star review. And don't forget, subscribe to Poplitics on YouTube.